Well, today I'd like to speak about a word that we say a lot, but maybe we don't think about very much, and that word is amen, or amen, depending on how you pronounce it. It is a Hebrew word, so if anybody ever asks you, do you know Hebrew? You can say, just a little bit. I know a little bit. And what it means is, it comes from the root word for believe, and it means something different in different contexts. So I want to speak about two contexts or ways that we use the word amen. We can use it as an introduction before we say something, or as a conclusion after we say something. Jesus used the first way a lot, and as we heard that in today's gospel, amen, I say to you, and then he went on to teach. And in that context, the word amen means truly. And Jesus used this a lot over two dozen times. In John's Gospel, we hear that Jesus would say it twice, like, Amen, Amen, I say to you, and then go on to say something. And he usually used that when he was going to say something challenging that would require a greater belief. He would say, Amen. And so, um, it is a good testament to the truth of what Jesus says. And we should really think about this and how he is faithful and true, and that his word stands forever. It does not change. It is not just my truth. It is the truth. And this is very really important today because oftentimes what Jesus says runs contrary to the wisdom of the age, to what we think here about today, to the shifting sands and uh, changing winds of what people think in popular opinion especially today, like what we heard in our readings today about anger, about unforgiveness, about lust, about adultery, about divorce. All of these things that Jesus teaches are clearly contrary to what the world tells us today. And so we should think about how Jesus's word is true and that it is never changing and n never changes. In the book of Revelation, Jesus is called the Amen because everything that he teaches is God's wisdom. He is the eternal Son of God, come to earth for our sake to teach us what to believe. And so, as Christians, we need to um, stake our lives on the words of Christ and not on the popular notions of, of the day. You know, the, the symbol of our faith is the, the cross of Christ, which never changes. The symbol of our faith is not a weather vane that moves with the wind. Um, so that's how Jesus uses it. Now we use it the other way. We use it as the completion of what we have said. And we know that in the New Testament, this was used in the early church. They would say amen at the end of their prayers. And we even hear in the book of Revelation that that's what they say in heaven. They say their prayers and then they say amen. So it's no surprise that we still do that today. And we do this a lot, as you know. A few years ago, I was at the cemetery for a burial, and the military was there to do honors for the person that had died. And um, the, the guy came up to me, and, and I told him, after I'm done, then you can go and do your, your part. And he said, okay, well, how do I know you're done? Is it when you say amen? And I said, no, because we say amen and amen and amen and amen. So I said, I'll just look over and tell you. I'll just give you a little wink or something like that. But, you know, we do it a lot. And you think about it here at Mass, we do it a lot, too. And I just want to mention three times that we, that we say amen at Mass. Um, one time is at the end of the creed. You know, the creed begins, I believe, and it ends with amen. And this creed was written in the year 325 at the Council of Nicaea. And then they added on to it at the Council of Constantinople in 381. And every Sunday since, all over the world, Catholics have said the creed. And we say amen to it because it is a summary of our beliefs. And it's like a mirror that we can look at and say, is this what I believe? Or is this something that I hear contrary to this? Because this is always faithfully and true. And so we say amen to that. As in, in this context, amen means it is so, so be it, it is true. Something like that. It is true. And then the, the second time I want to mention is during the Eucharistic prayer, 
you know, when we're all kneeling down and the priest uh, says the words uh, of, the, of the prayers of consecration and I become the body and blood of Christ. And at the very end of that, there's uh, what's called the doxology, which is a fancy word that just means words of praise. We say through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And then everyone says, Amen. And sometimes we sing it, and when we do that, it is our profession, it is true, so be it, this is right. And then the final time that I want to mention is um, when we come up for Holy Communion, and the priest holds the, the body of Christ, and he says those words, the body of Christ, and we say, Amen, right before we receive Holy Communion. Um, if you're old enough to remember the uh, Latin Mass, you might re recall that you didn't say Amen when you received Communion then, because the priest would say in Latin, may the body of Christ keep you safe into eternal life, Amen. And so the priest said Amen. But us saying Amen when we receive Communion is very ancient, and it's a very fitting thing because it is our opportunity at that moment to profess our faith, to say it is true. When, when the priest says the body of Christ, we say, Amen, it is true, so be it, um, so it is. And then we receive um, communion. And this is one of the reasons why we don't practice inner communion. We don't just say everyone's welcome up to communion because when you receive communion, it is a profession of the Catholic faith. And it would be a lie if we didn't profess the Catholic faith and receive communion anyways. So it's a good opportunity for us to, to say amen and to profess our faith. And one final time that we hear the word amen, and that is at the very end of the Bible. The last book in the Bible is the book of Revelation. I was once at a trivia night or something, and of course, most of the things that they were asking, I did, had no idea about. But they asked, this, they said, what's the last word in the Bible? And I was like, oh, I know this one. And uh, I'm sure you guys can guess it now, too. It is amen, okay? So if you're ever at a trivia contest and they ask, what's the last word? You say, amen. And if you win some money off of that, make sure you give some back to the church, since I helped you out. <laughs> So the last word in the Bible is amen. You know, St. John, we can imagine him uh, writing the conclusion to the book of Revelation, which is really beautiful, and he deciding to put a nice little bow on top. Amen. So be it. So it is. It is true. And that's the conclusion. And so we can take that word as never changing, as always true, the word of God in our lives. And so... Um, we should um, say our amen every day with our lives to all that God teaches us, all that he commands of us, all that he offers to us, and say amen firmly and truly, saying, so be it, it is true, let it be so in our lives. And then we'll, we'll truly be the disciples of Christ in the days of our life. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 